You have just installed Arch Linux and wonder what to do next? I'm going to share with you my 10 things to do first after installing Arch Linux. Hello everyone, it's Average Linux user, and the first thing I recommend is to install a long-term support kernel. Check your current kernel, then install an LTS kernel, and reconfigure group. You can find all the commands in the description. You may also install Linux LTS headers, it is required for some applications like Dropbox. Reboot and check which kernel is in use with uname R. If everything is fine and your active kernel is an LTS kernel, feel free to remove non-LTS kernel. Type sudo pacman with option rs linux. The second step, install microcode. Microcode is some kind of software installed on your processor. While microcode can be updated through the BIOS, the Linux kernel is also able to apply these updates during boot. These updates provide bug fixes that can be critical to the stability of your system. For Intel processors with group bootloader, install Intel U-code and upgrade group config file. For AMD processors, install Linux firmware package. Third, disable group delay. You see this group menu every time you start the system. Let's make the system skip it and load as fast as possible. Add the following lines to the file atc default group, then put the file 31 hold shift to atc group.d, the file is in the description, make it executable and regenerate the group configuration. This won't show group menu during the system load. To show group menu, you need to hold the shift key during the startup. The fourth step is to install some key packages. Here I recommend only cross-desktop packages such as fonts, spell checking dictionaries, gstreamer plugins, java. I list them all in the description. I will do a separate video about the applications I install in KDE Plasma 5 desktop. The fifth step is to set up firewall. The best way to set up a firewall on Linux is to use IP tables, but it is quite complicated and deserves a separate video. Here I will show you how to set up an uncomplicated firewall, which is fine for a regular user. Install UFW, enable it, check its status, the rules to deny incoming and allow outgoing are good for most of the users. Finally, enable the startup of this firewall with the system. Reboot and check the status again. It should be active. The sixth thing is to encrypt your home directory. It is wise to backup all your data before this step. The simplest way to encrypt your home directory is to use EncryptFS migrate home script. To run it, you need to log out, switch to a virtual console with Ctrl Alt F2. Log in as a root and check that your user owns no processes. Run ps with option u and your username. There should be no output. If some processes are active, you can kill them or reboot and log in as a root. Install the necessary applications, then encrypt your home directory. Run modprobe encryptfs and then run cryptfs migrate home and your username. Use the same passphrase as your login password. It is required for auto mounting. Log out and log in as a regular user. Mount your encrypted home with encryptfs mount private. Unwrap the passphrase and save it somewhere where only you can access it. Then run ls.encryptfs and make sure auto mount, auto unmount and wrap passphrase exist. Then open system authentication file and edit it as shown in the video. Reboot and make sure you can log in to your desktop. Now it's safe to remove the backup of your home, which was created during the migration and named with your username and some random characters. The next four steps can be classified as post-installation and post-configuration. So the sevens, remove orphans. Remove unused packages, also known as orphans, and their configuration files. So run this command. As you can see, I have no unused packages on this system, but you might have. 8. Optimize Pacman's database access speed. Run sudo pacman optimize. This will speed up your pacman. 9. Check for errors. First, check for fail systemd services. Second, check for errors in log files. If you experience some errors, google them. If they are serious, try to fix them. 
the errors you see on my system are not very dangerous as far as I know. And the last step is to back up the system. I have only root partition on my system, so I back up everything except some unnecessary directories. You can find this command in the description. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please subscribe if you want to watch more Linux videos. Thanks for watching.